Marriage is a committed relationship based on the principle of love and not the feeling of love. Because feelings may change, feelings may ebb and flow, but the principle of love must always remain constant in our lives. Feelings may be affected by circumstances. Feelings may be affected by a change of fortune. Feelings may be affected by your present state of being, whether a melancholic state or a state of euphoria. But the principle of love must maintain its constancy, its focus and its power regardless of circumstances. And marriage is to be an illustration of the constancy of the principle of love and the nurturing environment that it creates in a family. So we have to be committed to making the relationship work and committed to relating adequately in the relationship. So we have to be committed to learning how we can best relate to each other in our relationship. We have to be committed to the commitment of marriage. We have to be committed to practicing consideration for each other. We have to be committed, beloved, to cooperating with each other to make marriage work. This is absolutely necessary and this is the mindset that we have to pray for and consciously work at on a daily basis. Because the challenges of marriage primarily occurs in our minds and our feelings, our emotional state. And this is what is manipulated by the devil to create discord in your marital union to cause it to become a marital disunion. So the devil now is invested in the failure of your relationship. But understand this, beloved. God who has established marriage is invested in the success of your marriage. The work of the devil is to divide you, to create discord and disunion in your marital relationship. But the work of God is a work of reconciliation in your marriage. And that work of reconciliation requires humility, beloved. So God is invested in your marriage's success and your mind is the battlefield upon which victories will begin for your relationship or battles will be lost for your relationship. And one of the things that we must understand and we cannot allow ourselves to be naive about, beloved, is the fact that Eve was made perfectly for Adam. She came direct from the hand of God, formed from the substance of man. She was made from man for man. She was made exactly for Adam. She was well suited to Adam, his temperament, his disposition, his character, his work, his life's mission and purpose. But yet still, even though they were perfectly made people, in a perfectly made world, still things went awfully wrong because of one reason, perception and choice. And this is why we say that marriage can be a very messy thing because you are dealing with human beings. You are dealing with distinct individual personalities, distinct individual characters, distinct individual backgrounds and life experiences, beloved. And so your perception and your choice are necessary for you to understand and control within the framework of your marriage that you can use these aspects of your thinking capacity to maintain a state of peace, commitment, cooperation and consideration in your relationship. So when you look at Adam and Eve who were perfectly made for each other, they, you would recognize that they chose 
to destroy their peace, their happiness, their contentment by what they chose to believe. And you will ultimately make a choice on whether or not you will preserve the peace of your relationship by how you perceive your spouse. And so the devil tries to get us fixated on the flaws of our spouse's character that we may find fault with them to excuse ourselves from being invested in the success of the relationship beloved the devil does not want you to give 100 he wants you to give 90 80 70 60 50 percent of your energy because when you begin to hold back you create a vacuum that he comes in and he separates you fully from your entitlement to peace in your experience as a married person and when he can't get sufficient evidence for you to be fixated on your spouse's faults or flaws he fabricates faults about them he changes your perception about them so that you begin to be discontented and it replays this in your mind over and over again and often our misperception of them looms so large in our consciousness that we believe that they are now our mortal enemies so the devil wants your marriage to die a slow painful death of non-commitment in consideration and unwillingness unwillingness is the opposite of cooperation and this is what he does beloved this is what he did to eve and adam in the garden of eden he casts doubt on the integrity of your spouse he creates a myopic focus on, on, on their flaws he makes an alternative option look attractive and the alternative option may not be necessarily a person but it is a shift in your attitude towards them and this quenches the energy that is required to be 100% invested in, in, in by you into making your marriage work he deceives you into thinking that that the alternative is the better option and you are now justified in your decision to opt out of being 100 percent energetically mentally spiritually emotionally invested into the success and continuity of the relationship it makes you think that holding your corner it makes you think that limiting your love and your affection and your understanding is the thing to do that it is right because you are not getting back what you put into the relationship because they may appear to be slacking or not trying hard enough he deceives you beloved he deceives you into thinking that you are doing the most to keep the marriage afloat that they are not pulling their weight he deceives you into thinking that you do not deserve this treatment that they are giving you because they are taking you for granted and it comes and he whispers in your ears he gets under your skins he manipulates your 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 your, your heart your mind your feelings he's pulling the strings beloved to cause you to not be invested in the success of your relationship and it does this to cause you to give up that you would appear living but you're actually dead on the inside and this is how the devil works and in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 6 we read the exact formula that Satan used to deceive Eve into eating the fruit he cast doubt on the word of God. He made Eve believe that God was withholding something from her. He made eating that fruit look attractive and this is how he ensnared her and he uses the same methodology with us against us in our marriages beloved and this is why 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we 
are not ignorant of his devices. Do not be ignorant of the devices that the devil is using against your marriage through manipulating your thoughts and your feelings to cause you to become discontent with your spouse and with your relationship because he is going to take your us he is going to take your we and turn it into a you and a me and when he turns the us and the we into a you and a we a, a you and a me you are now no more you are no longer a couple. You are two individuals existing within a marital framework, but not experiencing the joys, the blessings, and the reason for it. And how does he do this? He brings in the spirit of discontent. And the spirit of discontent is opposite to the spirit of gratitude, beloved. Lucifer made Eve in the Garden of Eden discontented with her present state of being and he made her long after something that she did not possess and he caused her to desire it by first making it look attractive to her and all it was beloved was discontent and this is the same principle that he applies personally to your relationship all it is is a spirit of discontent so discontent is the opposite of gratitude gratitude changes your feelings gratitude adjusts your perception of your spouse gratitude improves your emotional state gratitude can save your marriage but it's not just your marriage that you are trying to save you are trying to save yourself from negative self-destructive habits that hinder your happiness and success in the things that really matter in life so do it for your soul today beloved be grateful today express this gratitude today and speak it you need to speak that word of gratitude to power and this is why scripture says i believe and therefore i have spoken and when you speak that word of gratitude a different spirit affects your mind a different spirit comes into your home the demons of strife are scattered practice gratitude today in your home that you may maintain your peace because peace is not a feeling peace is the spirit of god and a state of being and when you speak the words that are connected with the character of god you bring god into your situation to help to heal your situation and bring back reconciliation so recognize the good in your spouse and reaffirm it and let the, your recognition soften their hearts that they may be able to come around to your point of view on the matters where they count so that there can be unity full and free in your relationship this is the word of life with andre knight